everyone and welcome to week six of our Faith Heroes series. Now, before we get into anything else for today, let's just do a quick recap just to make sure we're all on the same page. You listening up? Okay, here it goes. So week one, we learned about John. Now, John, before he met Jesus, was a really, really angry person and really only thought about himself. But then when he met Jesus, he allowed Jesus to change him. And because he did that, God was able to use him in big ways in his kingdom. Then in weeks two and three, we learned about Mary Magdalene. And what she taught us is what it truly looks like to be a loyal and devoted friend of Jesus. And the fact that we can have that friendship today with Jesus still. Then weeks four and five, we looked at our main man, Daniel, and we saw how the one thing that he shows us is that he never backed down. Him and his friends, they stood up what they believed in no matter what it would cost them. In week four, we saw the whole thing with the food and how they refused to eat the king's food, but God blessed them anyways. And then last week, we saw how Daniel had to interpret some really hectic dreams that the king had, but he never backed down. He interpreted those dreams and he was obedient. And so today, in week six we are going to continue our story with Daniel and see what happens to him next but for now let's stand to our feet and let's begin this morning with a time of praise and worship
teachers lead us in your ways Tune our hearts to hear all that you say Your word is true, we know without a doubt And we stand on it like solid ground Your word is a lamp to my feet Through the good and bad When I'm happy and sad Your word is a light to my path Through the ups and downs You turn my life around You know, I know There is much we must discover I know, you know We've been given all the answers You know, I know That His word is there to guide us The word of God will with His promises just lead us in your ways Tune our hearts to hear all that you say Your word is true, we know without a doubt And we stand on it like solid ground Guide us, teach us, lead us in your ways Tune our hearts to hear all that you say Your word is true, we know without a doubt And we stand on it like solid ground Guys, I think it's time that we just not beat about the bush, but we go direct. Let's see what is next for Daniel. God hasn't let him down once, not yet. And you know what? Today, I think we're going to see a little bit of the same. So here we go. Daniel served in Babylon as the governor for many years. After the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, the king's grandson, became king of Babylon. Belshazzar was no better. He worshipped idols and was ungodly. Once again, God spoke through Daniel, warning Belshazzar during a lavish party Belshazzar held. A mysterious hand appeared and a finger wrote on the palace wall. Daniel interpreted what the words meant as no one else understood them. Daniel told Belshazzar that God was bringing his reign as king to an end and as he had not proved himself to be a good ruler. Daniel also told him that Babylon would be overthrown and taken over by the Medes and the Persians. That same night, Darius the Mede invaded Babylon and Belshazzar was killed that same night, just as Daniel had warned. It wasn't long before Daniel found favor with King Darius, just like with every other king before him. This made the other officials jealous and so they came up with a plan to get rid of Daniel. They convinced the king to issue a law that stated that no one would be allowed to worship or pray to anyone other than the king. If anyone was caught, they would be thrown into the lion's den. Now Daniel was known to be someone who prayed three times to God a day, and he wasn't about to change this for anyone. He stayed true to his faith and continued to pray to God every day, just as he had always done. Obviously, this led to Daniel being arrested, and it was only then that King Darius realized what his officials were up to when they convinced him to make that law. At this point though, it was too late and there was nothing the king could do to change anything. Before Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, the king prayed for Daniel's God to protect him from the lions, and then there was nothing more that he could do. Daniel was thrown into the den of lions. The king couldn't watch, and so he went to his room. In the morning, the king rushed to the lion's den to see if Daniel was alive. Miraculously, Daniel's life had been spared, and Daniel told the king that God had shut the mouths of the lions, and he was completely unharmed. The king had Daniel removed from the lion's den immediately, and he ordered the officials who had plotted against Daniel to be thrown in. The king then issued a new law stating that everyone needed to respect Daniel's God. Daniel was a faithful man, faithfully serving the rulers he was under, but above all else serving God faithfully without any compromise. God used him to interpret many dreams and signs, and we see how God was always with him, blessing him and protecting him and giving him favor wherever he went. The story of Daniel shows us just how much God will use someone when they are obedient and when they stay true to what and who they believe in. So God used Daniel to interpret dreams for kings. I mean, that's not a small thing at all. But because Daniel never backed down from what he believed in and he stand firm, God protected him and was always with him. God was for him just like our memory verse tells us. So guys, this week I have a very special and really cool object lesson for you guys. Now as you can see, I'm out here in the Sahara blazing sun desert. Not really, I'm at the south side, but, but don't stress because all I really need is the sun. And I'm gonna call on a little friend. So Danae, can you help me out with this? Yes, I can. We're gonna be playing a quick game 
of shadow tag. And how this works is if I stand on her shadow, she loses. If she stands on my shadow, I lose. So on your mark, get set, go. <laughs> So some of you guys may be wondering what exactly does that game mean for me as a Christian or me busy watching this video. Now what is basically being represented here is we are myself and the shadow is God. And what I'm basically trying to say here is that God will never leave you. Now some of you may be thinking what he's following me all the time like he doesn't want to leave me. That, that, that's a bit weird Chunky. But no it's not exactly like that. My shadow can never leave me. No matter where I go, I will always have my shadow. If I walk all the way to the west or all the way to the east, my shadow will follow me wherever I go. And the same thing is for Jesus. He will always, always want to be with you. You see, the Bible speaks about this one story where there was one lost sheep that went out and Jesus you know what he's saying? He's saying, I'm willing to leave the 99 to go after that one, after you. So, the point of this story right here is that Jesus loves you so much that he will follow you no matter where you go, no matter what mistakes you make, no matter what you do. He always wants to be with you. And it's up to us to respond. So guys, I have a special surprise for you guys. But if you've been around, you will know that it's a surprise I bring every single time. We're gonna be starting our memory verse today. We are taking it from Romans 8 verse 31. And it says the following. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? If God is for us, who can be against us? And guess what? We're gonna a little bit of dancing, a little bit of movement, a little bit of upwards turning around but but I'm gonna leave that all to Danae so over to her Jesus came to give us life and make us whole again The love of God to give His only Son I'll never understand Now nothing in this world could ever separate us from the love You give No height, no depth, no life, no death can ever take Your love away The 
story of Daniel shows us that God will always be with us no matter what. By no matter what, I mean no matter what we go through, no matter how impossible things might appear. But hopefully we never get thrown into a lion's den because I think I might be a bit scared of that. <laughs> but God is the God of the impossible and He can rescue us from even the most difficult situations. So even if we take the most difficult things away, we can trust that God will always be there right beside us, always. So I want to spend a moment here for anyone who feels like they might be facing something really, really difficult or in maybe in a difficult situation. And if that's you, I'm going to ask you, can you lift your hands like this? It's kind of like a way of saying, God, I need you. So if that's you, let's pray together. Let's all close our eyes. Lord Jesus, thank you that you're here today and that you are just looking down upon us. I pray that in this difficult situation, Lord Jesus, that you can just help us see more of you in this situation and how you write next to us. Lord Jesus, I pray that you help us walk through the situation and just bring light into it, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you are with us and you aren't leaving us no matter what. In Jesus' name, Amen. Spread your wings and fly for Jesus Like a butterfly in the breeze Stay free and alive for Jesus Like the monkeys in the trees And down by the waterfall You can see giraffes so tall Keep your head up high Try to touch the sky for Jesus
So guys, I just want to take a second and pray for another group of people, or another area of people. Maybe you felt encouraged by what we've been speaking about today, but you're not yet a child of God. or you have never asked the Lord to come and live inside your life. And God would really like to do that today. So I'm going to pray a prayer and you can repeat this prayer after me. And if that's you and you want to become a child of God, then please repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that without you, I'm nothing. But with you, I can be everything. Come and live in my life and make me a child of God. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. Well, guys, that is a wrap on our main man, Daniel. We have seen him do incredible things. And the one thing that we can take from Daniel is that he was a man full of faith. And because he was full of faith and always obedience, God was able to use him. We saw how in week one, he stood up to not eating the king's food because it went against their beliefs. We saw then in week two, how he interpreted the king's dreams, even though the dreams didn't have really, really nice meanings. He still interpreted them obediently. And then this week we saw how he survives the lion's den. That even though he was thrown into a pit of hungry lions, because he was obedient, because he was faithful, God protected him. And so my encouragement to all of us is that we would be like Daniel, faithful, obedient, bold, and courageous, because that's the way God's called us to live. Now next week, we're gonna look at another faith hero and her name is Ruth. So make sure you don't miss out. So guys, it is the end of the week. Can you believe it? Because it's Sunday, but, but we are not done for today. We have one more thing to do. And this week, it's actually very, very cool. We're gonna be doing a Sunday fun day challenge like no other, but it's gonna be focused mainly on your memory and and your general knowledge so make sure you're awake we're gonna see who hasn't been awake um yeah so just wake them up real quick so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking a look at some logos but before we get into that i'm guessing some of you might not know what a logo is now a logo simply put is just something that points to something else so as you can see here this is an adidas logo and it means adidas but how this game is gonna work is we're gonna put some logos up on the screen and you have to try to guess what they mean. So for example, uh, let's go with this logo. What does that mean? <laughs> now that one was fairly easy. That just meant McDonald's. We should have all known that one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna play a little bit of a video and you need to try to guess what the logos are. So let's get into it. That was so cool. How did you do? I know I got quite a lot of them correct because you know what? I'm a general knowledge type of guy. I like to go out into the world and I like to look at logos. But anyway, that's all for us this week. We'll be seeing you guys next week. Cheers.